Good morning, let's rise and shine, wake and bake, let's burn one before breakfast. This is episode 26, the Bear Skull Commission number one. Um, basically, um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do what I do with all my personal commissions. Uh, I'm going to bless the canvas, bless the art before I even get started. Um, I'm going to blow some of my energy onto it for positive things to come. Um, that it always be something that put forth my, my energy going into it like the smoke and coming out bringing out good things to whoever views it this is basically what i do on some level or another with everything that i paint i blow i blow onto it i blow my energy onto it that it covers that art with my energy that's basically what i'm doing here when i do this um today is going to be a little bit of a different episode this is the first episode for this uh commission and um basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you kind of step by step how i go about doing a commission for the most part i'm not going to finish this because i don't want the people who this is for to see the finished product till they actually receive it um so i will carry it so far but the first thing that i want to do today is i am going to show you how i got to this stage how i got to the point where i have this canvas so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to show you guys how i cut and staple the velvet onto the canvas um basically i have blessed it i blew my stuff on there and then i gave it the nine directional cuts of ninjutsu that no harm or danger come to anybody who you know just sort of blessing type thing you know my little warrior shit um yeah i mean warrior shit is like a seal of protection you know to ward off enemies and evil and shit you know what i mean i put that on special pieces you know where i know that the person that this is going to is a loved one you know what i mean people that i love this is for who this is for um so with that said let's run this intro So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to pick up the canvas and set it to the side, right? And we are going to take our velvet and we are going to spread it out across the table, right? And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have an edge visible. And we want to make sure that we have the two other edges also visible. We don't need the all four. We just need, right now, we just need to make sure we got three. And at this point, make sure that the, what you're looking at is not velvet, right? Velvet, the back. Make sure what you're looking at is the back. You don't want to put this on backwards. And believe me, I've done it. Right now, what you want to do is you want to take your canvas and you want to put it on, right? And you want to just kind of measure it out visually where everything is, right? And what you want to do is you want to take that little the edge that you have here and you want to bring it up. And what I like to do, if if I don't know if you can see, the canvas is wrapped over and it's in this groove in this stretcher bar right and then you have wood right what i like to do is i like to put the velvet over this and staple it to the wood that way if this should come undone the, the velvet's not attached to this it's attached over the canvas that's another reason why i like to get the canvases like this as opposed to you know even sometimes the canvases that are stapled on the side are not too bad um, it just kind of depends. Staples on the side can sometimes interfere with, with framing. 
Um, but I like to get them like this. this is what they call gallery wrap where they put this like this and you know it's a nice clean edge instead of the staples or whatever. Um, I also like it for another reason is that the staples and all this stuff are in this edge and there's not staples that I'm going to run into too many staples. You got to be careful of the staples in the corners. And so what you do is you make sure, like I said, you get yourself pretty much squared up. I like to make sure that I got roughly the same amount overhang on this side as I do this side. So I got about a hand, about a hand, that's good. All right, and now I want to be as close as possible because I don't want to fight it, but okay, now you see how I've got that overlap right there? Now what I do, I go ahead and I take my staple and I staple that right there, right? And then I come along and then I pull from the bottom like I'm pulling this, and I come up and I put a second staple right there, right? And I come over to this end, and I pull it from the bottom, and I'm pushing down so that I'm not pulling, right? I'm just kind of get this, trying to get this tight overlap here. And again, I go right there, and then put a staple. All right, so now I got three staples, and in the middle of that, what I'm going to do is in the middle, drop a staple, drop a staple. All right, put this down real quick, hit this duty. Okay, now you got five staples in, all right? Then what you do is take this up and pick it like this, right? And then what I like to do is I like to flip it like this. There you go. See? Come close to an edge right here. It's like, I don't know if I have enough, right? But I'll be fine because I have this overlap over here. But then basically that's what it is, right? I go to the, that tightest end I come over here, right? And I put this staple right there, all right? And then now where I started off in the middle here, I'm starting off on the ends over here. It's kind of like working opposites. So now I got those edges, and now I'll pull it in the middle, just, just hand tight. Not like, I'm not trying to go crazy with it. staples on this side too. Okay, so now we got 10 staples in. Five and five on the length, right? Let's see what I'll do here is when I come over it like that, that's where I'll cover that real nice. But I'm not, I'm not doing the sides right now. I'm still working on the length, right? So now I got this. Right, and now what I'm going to do here, is now I'm going to pull and I'm going to hit the staples in between the staples. Okay. So that's not, right, and now I'll flip this, like this, it'll be easier to flip without losing it. And I'll come in here and put these little staples in the middle of those previous staples. Okay, so now we have nine and nine. Now we have 18. Now what we're going to do, now we're going to work on ends, okay? What I like to do is this is where my scissors are going to come into play. Because I need to trim. Down and hit it with a 
of staples. And then I make like this kind of like a bootleg hospital corner. If you're ever in the military, you understand what I'm talking about. And I fold it over and I come back over the top and then I hit it with a staple, all right? And then I go and do repeat the same process on this corner. Come in, I give it a little bit of a trim. Be careful that your bottom of the scissors are not poking into your canvas. That is a bad thing to happen, right? So now again, fold over. When I hit this fold, I hit that staple, staple that down, and then again, do this what I call a bootleg hospital corner. And I bring it up straight over. And then I hit that with a stick. Now I got my corners and I pull in the middle. Just enough to be tight. Get that staple there. Again here, pull this just enough to be tight. There, pull this in just enough to be tight. Get that stuck. Now, work on this corner. And I'm going to go ahead and do this corner first because this is the one where it's like a little short. And so, really, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put this little hospital corner in like this. this into the side. That'll help hold it so that it, I won't lose it because it's a little tight. And then just fold this again. Just straight fold it over the top. And then hit that with a stick. Right? Look how clean that looks. So you would never know that it was a little short there on that side. And then again, same process. The only difference is, is that here. People have asked me how to have you ever hit your thumb with the staple? And the answer to that is no, because one of the things that I do when I first get a new stapler is I look exactly where on the side it comes out so that I know that it comes out right above that blue line or on this particular one there's like a blue line and it shoots out right above there and so I know not to be anywhere near that blue line on my finger. All right okay so now this is where it really counts because, as you can see, if you've done this right, you don't have too many wrinkles. This is your last little place to really tighten it down, right? If you've done this right, you won't have any. You got, I got a little bit right here, but I still got to pull this. This is the last little part, right? Where I really got to, and I'll pull those out. See that? I don't know if you saw that or not, but. And so now, what I like to do is pull this center real, real tight. Again, I'm not. I'm only trying to get really as tight as my hands can pull it. That's really all you need. Because anything more than that, you're going to start stretching the nap, and then it, you're you're not doing that any good by doing that. Hit that staple right there. And come through here. Now you've already stapled this corner, so now what you want to do is you want to kind of pull in the middle. Give it a staple right there. Same thing. Pull in the middle uh, and give it a staple right there. Okay. So at this point, you should have 28 staples in here. If you've been counting. Now you can kind of see that this is where you do your test to see whether or not it's got wrinkles in it that you need to 
address. If you've done this right, you really won't need anything more than that. And I got a little bit of wrinkles right there. I knew I was going to fight. There was only a couple wrinkles right here I got to fight. So, when it comes to fighting wrinkles, what you do is you just eye pull right at the wrinkle. And I hit it with a staple on the opposite side. I just pulled that out. Right. Same thing here. Pull, do a little pull right there. Hand tight and hit it with a staple. These are like minor little adjustments that you're making to the tightness of. Because you don't want to You want that to be smooth. You know what I mean? There's a little right here. That right there. Out of staples. So take this. That's another reason why you can't because there's only so many staples on that. Out of staples. Basically, you're just giving it a little tug. Holding that and putting a staple right there. And that's another, like I said, another reason why you don't want it too, too tight. Because if you got wrinkles in it, it's stretched already to its capacity, well, then you're not going to be able to remove those wrinkles. And like I said, I'm just checking the edge to make sure. It is smooth and it is right. There's two directions. This is the rough direction of the nap. And you put your hand on you can feel. It's like to me velvet is like a shark's skin. One direction it feels one way, the other direction it feels another way. And if you know anything about shark skins, if you rub them wrong, it can cut you. But they do feel velvety, right? And then this is the opposite way of the mat, right? So now you should see a line in there, right? Okay. And I usually like to be the smooth way of the nap, and then whenever I draw, pull the nap up. That way, when I put whatever lines in there, I'm putting my lines in standing up. Little things, little things. Now what I do is I turn this over, and I get out my handy dandy little scissors, <coughs> and I trim these edges. And I still leave enough so that if I got to make an adjustment later, I have something by which to make an adjustment. You can always cut more. You can never cut, you can never put it back. If you cut too much. All right. And that's pretty much what I do. You know what I mean? Um, and then um, when it comes time to on in, a, in something like this, like if it was just a regular canvas and it didn't have anything on it, um, I would send it just like that. Um, I would sign it and then send it out. Um, on something like this, um, what I would do is I would sign the inside for posterity um, because ultimately um, me signing the back of the canvas is not signing the velvet. Right, so I would sign the back of the canvas for posterity, and then basically what I would do is I would get paper and tape, and then put that over the back. Make sure it has a a, a hanger. Doesn't necessarily need one in the case where I feel like this is something that's going to be framed. That's another reason why I staple on the back and not the sides. Um, and now 
with this, um, this is pretty much ready to go be painted. Again, 24 by 36. And um, thanks for watching. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to go straight to painting in this video. Um, it depends on the duration and, and how I feel. But thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Um, love, peace, and chicken love for threes. I'm out of this bitch! Ouch! Watch where you're poking that, mister. Woo! Weed! It smells like weed in here!